Welcome, man. Welcome back to the channel, guys. What is going on, everybody? Woo! What a long day at work today, man. Um, I actually got burnt today, guys. I'm going to share this with y'all, man, because I ain't... It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. What I mean by burnt is I got burnt from a standpoint of I gambled. I gambled on something, okay? Now, I don't know how many of you guys out there... Uh, do a lot of what drivability work so to speak and uh which were required sometime uh computer tampering with computers and things like that uh reconfiguration trying to put stuff in removing stuff out trying this trying that well i got a car today that had a transmission issue a shifting issue okay uh it would not it would not shift. Now, y'all know the, today's shifters are, <laughs> are pretty much almost completely electronic, el electrical. Okay, so it's tied in with the transmission, the engine. It's tied in with some of everything. This is all the new stuff I'm speaking about. So, I had a car come in on a tow truck. Uh, one start. Uh, shifter. The shifter. I think the shifter was, I think what was going on is the shifter was letting the computer know that the car was in gear when it actually was not in gear. Now, there's a mechanical shifter on the transmission, okay, some form of mechanism that will move something back and forth, uh, inputting or insinuating gear, reverse, drive, things like that, okay, there's some sort of mechanism in place for that. But in this case, uh, this is a rotary shifter. Now, that shifter is a module in itself, okay? Some way, somehow, this shifter got off of topology, not topology, off of uh, the bus network, off of, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, proxy, okay? Proxy alignment. I think, uh, it was, I got a couple of guys on the, that's in the Chrysler. Tom probably know what I'm talking about. The shifter assembly got off of the proxy alignment, so it would not move. Now, without guys, I, I I don't know why I hold you have these type of videos because it's a special scan tool. The scan tool we use, we can see everything Chrysler related, everything FCA related. Now, you guys may not have that luxury, so I'll speak about it anyway. Well, some way, somehow, the shifter got off the proxy alignment, and lo and behold. I can't shift. I can't start. I can't do nothing. Now, the only way I found out, guys, is uh, I went in my scan tool and viewed the proxy setting. Lo and behold, the shifter was off. Off of the, from time to time, module just just pull itself out of the proxy alignment or out of the bus network. I don't know how this stuff happened, guys. But now, granted. The customer already aware that she may have to pay uh, an hour diagnostic time. The first day was insinuating or thinking it was warranty, but there was no warranty on this car. It had quite a few miles. So she's already under the impression that she's an hour deep anyway. Whatever we decide to charge this given day per hour, I don't know what it is these days. It depends. <laughs> so now I'm, an hour, I'm, I'm allocated an hour to figure out what's wrong with the car. Now, in some extreme cases, guys, we got to go back to the advisor and tell them, look, man, we need more time. I need more time. This is a deeper problem than I anticipated. I need more time to go further, okay? I've used up my hour so far. Now, some of that can be skill-related toward the, the actual technician, okay? So you would think if a guy keep coming back asking for more time, either he's not good or he's manipulating the situation, to his advantage you know who's to say he's lying nobody has those type powers a guy with a level three guy with skills <laughs> can need more time on just about everything he pull in it you never know man you never can tell the problems are different from car to car so let me get on with my point i hook up my scan to i find out the shift is off the proxy okay now i take it upon myself to put it back on the proxy and magically whoa, it appears 
I'm back on the bus network. I'm back on the proxy setting. So another magical thing happened. Whoa, my shifter is now working, guys. It's a rotary shifter. All of a sudden, everything is working. So I'm at this dilemma on how do I explain this to the advisor? How do I explain this to the customer? I can't because I will set myself up for failure if I try to do this because I literally don't know how a module come off of the network like that. Now, another gamble I made is uh, going ahead and doing it, okay? I take a, sometime guys, y'all gonna learn this if you stay, if you become, get into the, the industry as deep off as I am. Tom Macon contested this. Sometime guys, we literally have to fix stuff to find out if that was the problem. And this is that type of case. I literally had to put this module on the proxy setting just to see if that was the problem with the car in the first place. Now that it's fixed, that obviously was my problem. So now the donning tags come trying to sell it to the customer. Okay, I'm three hours deep. I need three hours to do this. Now, <laughs> the dilemma comes in at, if they say no, I just done all this work for nothing. If they say yes, the job is complete, done, and ready to go. So sometimes, guys, you got to take a chance, man. You, dog, man, all this electrical stuff, nobody is certain on anything, man. I do stuff that I can't even explain why it happened. Some insurance company want to know why something happened, why it happened. <laughs> I can turn in a claim, an overheating claim, uh, I need cylinder heads. Why? Because the damn thing is overheating and uh, my cylinder heads I walk. Okay, what caused it? Now, you can't really blame them, man. You finna shell out a lot of money on a claim. They want to know things that in some cases you can't. And I don't have a crystal ball. I mean, I'm, I'm going to address things that will cause a car to overheat, such as water pump, thermostat. I'm going to address that, a, re a restricted radiator. Yes, I'm going to look into all of that. But as far as asking me what caused the cylinder heads to overheat. Now, he was thinking head gasket. Guys, I am totally done. Hear me out. Because I still see this. People still do this. I am totally done with removing a cylinder head and merely replacing the head gasket. I'm done. I wash my hands with a repair like that. And a repair like that is simply called head gasket. Blown head gasket, replace the head gasket. <laughs> With the invention of MLS gaskets, multi-layer steel head gaskets, uh, and those head gaskets tag team with, in some cases, an aluminum cylinder head and aluminum block, I'm done. I'm never doing a so-called replace head gasket repair. All right, I've been burnt. I haven't been burnt in a while merely because I stopped doing it. And for those of you out there that are still doing it, uh, it's, it's risky business, man. And here's the reason why. Like I say, uh, in the event your car overheating, guys, yes, you need to find out why it's overheating. And for the record, a blown head gasket, well, I may set myself up. A blown head gasket can be the ending results Oh, okay, let me do it like this. Symptoms of a blown head gasket can be the end of results of your car was overheating. So, which means you need to find out what started your car overheating in the first place. I have yet to see a head gasket cause the overheating because I have yet to see a head gasket <laughs> fail. Yes, I'm sure they fail. I've seen pictures of a head gasket, multi-layer steel head gasket blown right between the circle, the seams. Yes, I've seen it. It's just that I personally haven't. So until that happens, guys, my thinking is going to remain the same. If you're giving off, if your car is giving off blown head gasket symptoms, <laughs> I'm going to need teardown time, first of all. I'm going to remove your cylinder heads. If I find out your head gasket is blown right in the middle seams or you was just merely giving off the symptoms, that aluminum head is either done or going to a machine shop, okay? You guys are taking major chances, major risk, just merely putting a head gasket on that car and putting that same cylinder head back on that car. No, sorry, Bob. JT is done with those type of repair. I guess, man, what I'm trying to say is sometime 
you will have to uh, make a repair. You will have to just take a chance, guys, because think about it this way, guys. Which side of the coin you want to be on? You want to be on this side of, uh, I took a chance, and now I'm certain the car is repaired. Now I just got to hope the customer buy the estimate, whatever the three hours translate into. You just got to hope they buy it. You want to be on that side or you want to be on the side of, wow, I sold a job for three hours, man. Here you go. Go ahead and do it. You actually attempt to do the job and you find out that do not fix the problem. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather be on that side, on this side of go ahead and do it. I'll make up somewhere else, guys. I'll, I'll, I'll just have to cut my losses and find, gain that somewhere else on something else. These electrical cars are way too savvy, man. They are a lot more savvy and trickier and just, they just, ah, oh, they can drive you crazy, guys. So, sometimes it had, and that's, that, that doesn't make you a bad guy. That doesn't make you, one guy, one um, service advisor told, called me uh, garbage. So, you wasn't sure that I was going to fix it. I said, hey, look, man, you Mr. Know-it-all, you come back here and try to figure some of this stuff out. Guys, working on cars is not easy as it used to be. Okay, I'm from an era where things were pretty simple, simplicity, and everything was, you know, simple-minded. Now, and I've had to adjust, okay? So think about it like that. I had to bring this new stuff on up with me, and I'm not done. So I can see myself 10, 15 more years in this game. So I got to keep up or get left behind. Oh, this video too long, guys. Uh, I just wanted to tell y'all about my day. I'm headed to the house. Um... Uh, I think I'm gonna go live tonight. Well, y'all don't even know what the day is because I have no clue when this video gonna upload. But uh, y'all know I typically go live Sunday and Thursday. Tech Talk Thursday, okay? Uh, typically around eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Rough day today, man. So uh, car is still on my brain, so I figure I'd discuss it. I catch up with y'all on the live stream, man. I don't know, like I say, I don't know. But until then, guys. I'm at the, my destination. Y'all be good. Take it easy. And uh, I'll see y'all on the next video.